Hello there everybody, my name is Fred or Snitz for those who don't know me and today I'm recording a colony survival tutorial for everybody because I've been streaming it a lot now before the release and the release is in 11 hours I think. Yeah, 11 hours. So let's get a tutorial out there for everyone who wants to play the game. Uh, let's see, we'll call this world a tutorial. Uh, we will have monsters. Monsters during daytime means that zombies will attack you 24-7 and not just during the nights. This makes the game a lot harder and I like to play it like that, but we don't really need to right now. I will, however, have double the amount of monsters on the map. Uh, just to show you how everything works. So when you Join for the first time, you get this little tutorial, click F1 to get rid of it. I spawn on top of a tree. That's a bit weird. But yeah, so what you can do now in the beginning is that you can farm materials. Uh, before you place your flag or anything like that, start your base, farm. Farm up a good amount of materials, uh, whatever you feel like having. But I'm just going to get started. So we can place our flag our banner and this is what the zombies will try and destroy so I'll place it here we will now have zombies spawning around this flag 75 blocks away from it or further away I believe and they will try and destroy it and we need to keep a path open to it so we can't block it in completely because then we enter something that's called siege mode that means that the food per day our colony is using is increased by six times and that's a lot so what i will start doing now for this tutorial is i will only make a little house around this uh, quickly grab a bow for myself uh, let's see, we don't need to make it bigger than this for now. And I'll show you a few defense uh, strategies that I think you should know. That's good enough for this video. I will explain every single step throughout the game at the game's current stage. Uh, so you can... Uh, so you can do everything. So what I'm doing now is I'm making beds because we need a bed for each colonist Colonist? Is that what we call it? Each citizen in our colony, I guess uh, uh, Hold where you want to place the bed and click R to rotate the arrow and you see the arrows pointing at me So the feet of the bed will be towards me. I'll place a few just to have some ready uh, Now I want to set a uh, a task for our first citizen. So I'll just left click with the command tool, select wheat farmer, then I'll right click and we'll make a 10 by 10 farm. That's the biggest one you can make. We can do it in other shapes as you can see. So we'll do a 10 by 10. There we go. Then I click the banner again on number two on my hotbar and right click. So Colonists require 5 food units per day and a bed. Recruiting a colonist costs 50 food units. So if you look up here to the right, we have 300 food. And right now, 0 food per day in cost. So yeah, I'll, I'll happily recruit someone. Oh, I accidentally recruited 3 of them. Uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of bad. Uh, so you don't want to do that. Recruit 1, because he's going to start farming food. And I might as well get another person to farming right away. Because we're going to be very low on food once this actually yields any food. Uh, and because I want to make use of this guy. And I did, stupidly enough, uh, recruit him. I'm not going to make him into baker just yet. I will do that eventually, once I have some wheat grown. Right now I want him to mine stone, so he'll just be down here giving us all the good, all that good stone we need to build our oh, castle or whatever we want to build. So when mining with your units, what you do is you dig down 
to the bottom of the map uh, to what a lot of people would call bedrock from playing Minecraft. Let's see here. Yeah, here we go. So if you set them to mine on one block, they will mine that block forever. So right here's some metal. You'll see if I mine that. We got a metal or iron ore. Uh, but I'll set a chest here. And oops. And we'll do miner. And he'll mine there. So he'll just mine normal stone for us. Uh, and because we had one unemployed person, he has now taken that job. But he requires a pickaxe to get started. So we'll make a pickaxe real quick. We need iron ingots on our hotbar. I'll explain all this in a second. Uh, we'll make a pickaxe. There we go. And he'll pick that up. There we go. And he'll walk down here and start mining. Yeah. So, when it comes to inventory and stuff like that, uh, your actual inventory is your hotbar. The stockpile is the entire uh, colonies inventory. So, if this wheat farmer drops some wheat in this chest, that means that a baker can pick the wheat out in any other chest from the stockpile. So that's your shared inventory between all the chests or crates in your colony. Your personal one is your hotbar. Then obviously you have crafting to the left. So if we want to make some planks here, that means we need uh, a log like this one. But we can't make it because we need to put it in our hotbar to craft. That's something that confused me in the beginning. Now, hopefully, it won't confuse you. Uh, and now, we're literally just waiting for night time. And we're surely going to be properly attacked. So, as I said, we can't block the path to the flag. That will starve the entire uh, colony. So, what I'm doing is... I'm building a bit of a moat. So now, the zombies will have no choice but to walk on this to get in. This can be utilized in a lot of ways. I just want to show you, you can dig a hole and they won't walk through it. That's our first zombie. Yeah. <laughs> and so they will. They can't walk across this, and it's quite nice when you move water into it. So I'll just show you the first couple of zombies here in a second. Here's our first zombies, <laughs> and obviously we can just left click with our bow to shoot them. Oh yeah, forgot I had that. They can actually walk up here. Luckily, I noticed. <laughs> there we go. Now they have to walk through this. That scared me a little bit. But yeah, so you have to shoot them. Obviously, you can have guards shooting, but we don't have that many people yet. The different stages you're going to go through in this is that you're going to need to increase food production uh, now and then. And so right now, because we have some stone now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some stone, make an oven, because we want to cook to make all this wheat when we harvest it into bread instead of just wheat. And then I'm going to go down to this guy, because I don't want to hire someone new, because we might actually like uh, not have food enough for that. So I'm going down to this guy. There we go. And I'm removing the area. So he's now changing profession. And becoming a baker. Because that's the job that was free for someone to take. So the mark he has above his head right now. he uh, That is that it, there's no wheat for him to use to make bread. Because it's not gathered yet. So something that you will have to try and balance is how many wheat fields you have to how many bakers and so on next up what i would do i'll just explain this to you uh, i would probably set up 
a forester somewhere around here and that works just like how you uh, make a wheat farm so you place it like this with a forester I prefer to make it a perfect square though uh, like 10 by 10 because uh, then you can fit as many trees as you can into it uh, but this works so there we have a foresting area we can see up here in the left top left uh, that we have one minus one unemployed that means we have one job more than we have people so then we probably want to hire someone but as soon as we have uh, this forester what I usually go for is a smelter so we need stone brick to make a furnace I'm just placing these guys here for now so the what this one will do is when someone mines iron gold or clay it will melt it into bricks and ingots so that one's very important because we need arrows to keep our guards happy uh, a guard uh, is placed by making a quiver and then in this case in this shitty uh, base I would just place it up here so now he would be up there shooting anything that comes nearby obviously you'll need a lot of them eventually but uh, so what we need to do is we need to craft arrows make sure there's always arrows for our guards especially if we play on 24 7 setting so we got zombies attacking us during the day as well uh, the amount of zombies attacking you is obviously determined by how many people you have so uh, as I said, farm resources in the beginning. To make arrows, you will make them by hand in the beginning. Uh, later on, you'll make a workbench, which someone will operate. And in here, you can say that always have, I usually write 500 here. So always have 500 arrows in stock. So the crafter here will use materials to always have arrows in stock as long as there is materials. So why I'm saying you'll do that by hand in the beginning is to make arrows uh, completely automa automated, you need a forester up and running, you need a miner mining metal, and you need someone melting it with a furnace. That's quite a lot of people in the beginning, especially while trying to, to defend and build up your food production. But as long as you listen to all these things, you'll do very fine. Uh, well, I will keep streaming and making videos with this game, obviously after release as well. Uh, release night tomorrow, Friday night, right after the release. We're going to have a, quite a big stream uh, where we set up a full featured multiplayer server and build some really cool bases together. So if you're watching this on the release day, make sure you check out the stream and we'll have some fun. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. <laughs>